Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Thank God for uh, for this opportunity to fellowship tonight. Amen. And to uh, give God the glory and praise as we celebrate by studying his word tonight. Uh, we're a few minutes late on tonight and we're asking, so we apologize about that uh, for uh, some technical difficulties there. And um, for those who, if you get a call and say, I couldn't get that, that link, uh, the link is out on our website and also on our uh, mobile app. And uh, the, the uh, website is www.haskellheightsfbc.com. And the mobile app you can get on our your mobile app store at Haskell entitled The Height. Amen. And uh, we say good evening. We thank God for the uh, powerful prayer. Sister Brown, thank you um, tonight. Amen. And we uh, we bless God for just the opportunity and to study his word. The, um, the unfortunate didn't have the handouts for um, and technical difficulties for a Sunday, but um, on the, you know on Sunday, but we do have them posted to the website and to the app, and uh, they should be included on the the text if that um, does seem to go through there. Uh, maybe having some some Wi-Fi difficulties. So I hope all is well, and uh, for those who don't get the broadcast, they, they will be able to uh, take advantage of the recorded broadcast after we're the completion of it on tonight. Okay. I do have, um, um, do want to take the opportunity to welcome any visitors who are with us and say, welcome to Haskell Heights First Baptist Church. Um, Pastor Wigfall, otherwise I know myself, I call myself by Pastor G. First name is Glenn, amen, Pastor G. And uh, we, we thank God for you uh, fellowshipping with us on tonight and, and bless God for um, what we believe will happen in your life as a result of the study of his word. We pray God's blessing upon you, healing over you, his deliverance um, toward you, and his favor to overshadow you. Amen. And uh, we do have a few announcements tonight. Uh, we said that lots of things are happening this coming Sunday. That's November 13th. And uh, let's say if you know of a person or who would be blessed with a basket or to, to receive a basket from us or to re uh, request a basket for yourself, please contact one of our deacons, your deacon or one of the deacons at the church. We need to have the names of the people receiving baskets by Sunday, okay? okay? So that we can make preparation. Our deacons are reaching out to our senior members and uh, to determine their need as well. Uh, ministry leaders, please complete your online form or contact Sister Mary Clark or Michelle Major uh, with the number of baskets your ministries will be contributing by next Sunday. That's, again, November 13th. We also will have a drive through basket drop-off after service at the back of the church under the awning. And so if you would, please, we'll make pre preparation to pick up your basket um, tomorrow. If you do ha have turkeys with them, we will... Go ahead and get those um, either into the uh, freezers uh, as appropriate, okay? And uh, Thanksgiving concert is going to be this uh, next, next Sunday, um, the 13th at 5.30 p.m. 5.30 p.m. Spread the word. We're just getting together to do a uh, time of worship together and a Thanksgiving concert to give thanks to the name of our Lord and uh, just a holiday concert that we can take a moment and take a break and make sure that in the hustle and bustle of the holiday, we don't forget to give God thanks. Amen. And so that's going to be 530 and uh, it, no cost for the, for the concert. It's been told uh, some, some are uh, requesting that they bring donations toward uh, the, the food pantry efforts. Amen. If you'd like to do that, that's fine. Um, but we, we are doing baskets in-house as well. So we thank you for um, your attendance and for your um, your time to uh, look at s Sunday as a as a complete day of ministry. Uh, reminder also that the um, the uh, women's ministry is collecting head coverings and scarves for uh, patients undergoing chemotherapy until November 27th. All right, that's the women's ministry examples can be found under head coverings for cancer patients on Amazon. If you're wondering what those are, uh, please. Avail yourself to that or the evangelism ministry is also going to be collecting hats, gloves, scarves, um, sleeping bags, um, and that's going to be done until December 6th to give those 
who are without housing during the winter months an opportunity to be warm during those winter months. We say happy birthday today to Sister Gloria Washington. Happy birthday. Hallelujah. And uh, we're asking for your prayer for Sister Mat Maddie Counts and, and the Counts family. Uh, we're asking also for your prayer for Brother Mark McElrath and his family and Sister Rose Scott and her family. Also for Deacon Maxwell and his family um, at the loss of his, uh, his father's uh, bride. And we're asking that you would please um, just keep all, your, all our families in your care and in your prayers. Amen. All right. So again, that is going to be a drop off. Amen. After service. Uh, the basket drop-off at the back of the church after service on Sunday. Amen. And uh, I think those are those will conclude the announcements. If, again, you have not gotten a copy of our handout, uh, hopefully it came through with your text. And uh, there's a whole lot, so I might be just uh, going over a little bit. I'm, gonna, I'm going to um, ask you to go ahead and, and use the chat. Please use the chat so we can uh, interact a little bit. Amen. We're still working on those. Um, th those situations so that we can make effic effective and efficient use coming into the new year with our chat and, and we'll have some meetings that we will come together personally so that we can, uh, our voices can be heard. I'll be excited to have an audience of people who want to, you know, engage and ask questions as well. We'll be uh, coming back so that we can uh, get, get in each other's presence for those of you who would like to do that. We will still be doing the broadcast. Amen. From, from the church as well, okay? All right, so tonight we're gonna to be studying how did we get the Bible? And we'll, we'll go over the roadmap again. I'll, I'll kind of, you know, I'm, I think I'm gonna go through the material. I don't wanna say plow through it. Um, it's a lot of material. And, and again, I may, again, next week, I may just do some reinforcement so that uh, we understand some basic principles that are necessary for us to understand in our Bible study challenge together. Um, these are necessary. It is the result of a question um, whether or not different versions still preserve the Word of God. Whether or not if you're reading a different version, say a New International Version, a New Living Translation, the Living Bible, the Message Bible, a New Revised Standard Version, New American Standard Version, Christian Standard Bible, um, you know, any of those translations, New King James versus King James or any of those translations, we want to know if we, when we trans, when we go from version to version, is God's word still preserved, and can we trust those versions? And so, in in our efforts to answer that question, I wanted to really kind of take us on a tour, take us on a journey or a travel. And so you see that little road on your document there. It's it's, and we're going to make several stops, and um, and and I'll explain that as we uh, after we pray and get ourselves. Uh, study started in our study okay all right so let's pray father we bless you we praise you we honor you god we uh we glorify your mighty name because uh who else could we uh glorify god there's none like you there's nobody who uh is worthy lord god and we thank you oh god for how you have have been uh gracious toward us and done great things for and with us god we uh we bless you for this opportunity to sit at your feet, Lord God, and to study your word. Holy Spirit, now come help us to open up our hearts and receive. We know you'll be tickled, Lord God, just to just to, that we would take time to study your word and um, and to make your um, make, make this the time of study productive in our lives. That means that our our lives will be changed, our faith will be increased, our body will be healed, our minds will be renewed, our footsteps will be upright. And so we thank you, O oh God, that um, during the study of your word, Lord God, we're going to hide these words in our hearts that we might not sin against you, Lord, and that we will find ourselves uh, closer to you in relationship and, 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 and immersed in your favor. So we bless you, we honor you, and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. So how do we get the Bible? Um, Roadmap says that we're going to... Um, uh, take the stops along this destination. We talked about um, for the last two weeks exactly what is the Bible. And we took a long journey to tell you that the Bible is the word of God, right? I'll review a little concept with that uh, on the sheet tonight. But what exactly is the Bible? It is the word of God. It's the authentic, it's the inspired, God-breathed 
word from the Almighty God. And that's what we need is a word from God. Whenever we go into the scripture, we are getting a word that came directly from our God. It came in many, many different formats. It came in many different ways um, that we're going to look at. As a matter of fact, um, I got a little, uh, I got a little visual here on our, on our page, on page one there, where it says, "Look at the circle to the right that says God's word." And and there were five things that we generally will encounter when we're being, um, when we're walking as Christian uh, disciples. We're going to encounter God's word as the actual speech by God, the things that God actually said. Let there be light. It was a decree. When God opens His mouth, He's got creative power. To, to do things. Amen. When God speaks, nature responds. When Jesus spoke, nature responded. Amen. Um, when, 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 so by decree, the actual speech of God is in God's word. Uh, also in that next box, it says God spoke an address to people in the Bible. When, when God spoke to Moses, when God spoke to Abraham, when he was, when he, when he spoke through the burning bush, when God speaks at the baptism of Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Um, God spoke and addressed two people in the Bible, we, you know, specifically. We're still getting God's authentic word. And then uh, we look at God's communication through human lips, through the conversations and through the, the uh, instructions, through all of the dialogue that happened in the narratives and in the historical information that we got in the Bible that, that was inspired by God. Those prophets, remember, we did from, um, you know, the books of, you know, 2 Timothy, 1 Peter. We, 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 looked at, um, we looked at how God inspired his word to, uh, to, to come forth out of human lips, but it was still yet the word of the almighty God. Amen. Um, and then it was God's word in written form. What word we have preserved that we're going to be speaking about tonight? Where did we get that from? How did the Bible, we can go to uh, the Bible stores now, it used to be uh, family Christian stores, and then it was Lifeway, and then now we have Mardell, and you can go out to Books A Million or Barnes & Noble or different places, Amazon, get yourself a Bible, and it, and it has uh, 66 books. But we have to understand that the process of bringing those books together um, is, is how we got the Bible. What we call the Bible is the Word of God. Is, is is through a fascinating process that that really ought to um that that we really ought to reverence God for that we ought to thank God for every day that we ought to give God the praise the honor and the glory for um, how He meticulously um, miraculously supernaturally um, moved that word down through generations preserved it so that we could get the authentic word from the living God. You want a word from God? Open your scripture and get a word. Amen? Um, and so uh, God's word in written form. And then the last part we find out from John, um, you know, John 14, John 1, chapter 1, uh, we, we find this thing out that this is, uh, this, this is the person of Jesus Christ. He is the word of God in living flesh, the word of God who came to live amongst us. Emmanuel, God with us. And, and so we have his word that came to be among us. And so when we have these uh, anointed copies of what we open up and carry, uh, we, we ought to be like those ancient Jews and feel so privileged that God would speak to us, that God would find time to talk to us um, from his wealth and, and from his well of wisdom. And from his well of power, the same power that spoke the, uh, the earth into existence is the God and the same word, the same uh, word source that speaks to us and empowers us, creates in us the opportunities to be obedient and to be healed and delivered and set free and, and made whole and preserved and, and make us an instruments of his righteousness and his peace. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I just can't say enough, but God's word is powerful. It's five things there. I want you to um, please uh, make sure that you understand, put some things in the chat. If I'm moving too fast, if, I'm, if, if, if I need to explain some things a little better, uh, please help me, you know, help me help you understand some things because I'm, I'm going to put together a, a, a quiz. I'm going to put together a, 
a, a, a quiz, and we're not going to move on until everybody gets the right score on that quiz. Amen? Amen. Amen. So look at the roadmap. We talked about what exactly is the Bible. Um, so tonight is how did we get the Bible? How did it come into being? And we're just going to discuss now. I want to I want to qualify this. I am not going to um, I'm not going to share with you all the depths of 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 um, information that could take. We could study how we got the Bible for 52 weeks in the year because it is an ongoing study is it is uncovering the things that God has done for us will will blow our minds. I'm going to give you an introductory understanding of this answer to how did we get the Bible so that you're not uh that that you're able to answer some questions. Remember the first said always be ready, always be prepared to give a reason to those who uh, of hope that lies in you. Um the faith that, that, that really moves you, that, that, that uh, breathes through you, that keeps you, that empowers you. Be ready to give people an answer. And a lot of people are questioning, where did we get the Bible from? How did we even get that? And uh, we, we need to be prepared to give some answer, right? Uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. The next uh, stop in our, in our development is going to be the, um, how the Bible was developed in ancient Near Eastern culture, that it is a cultural document. Um, meaning that it wasn't originally brought to us in English the way we uh, understand the Bible, but it was it was given unto us as a translation from the original languages among the original people who who populated the ancient Near East cultures, what we call the Middle East, um, which which then included even in the ancient set was part part of Africa. Amen. And so we need to understand something of their culture and how the Bible had to be translated from uh, not only the words, the equivalent words that we will use to understand what God was saying through these people in their native languages, in our language of understanding, which is English. Uh, but 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 we need to understand the cultural impact that goes along with those words that were translated. So we'll be studying a little bit of that. We're not going to get too deep into any one of these topics, but I'm going to give you enough to be able to understand um, when you read what it is that you're reading, and it's going to make it much more productive. Number four, we're going to look at the reliability of the Bible, um, uncovering what that bigger question really is. Is the Bible reliable? Are all translations, all transliterations, are all versions uh, equally um, God's word as we understand it and can I trust it and can I and, and can I rely upon it because we want the power of God's word and we don't want anything in the way of that power. Uh, number five, we're going to look at the challenges associated with that big question that we just uh, raised and then we're going to look at the manuscripts of, of the Bible. Just I'm just going to introduce you to the manuscripts. Tonight we'll talk a little bit about that um, but not, we'll save the rest of that for number six. And then seven, then we're going to get to the question that says, the explanation of different versions, evolution of the English versions. How did the English versions come about, and, and why are they different? I'm going to ask that, and so that you will be empowered, you will be equipped to be able to understand what version you're reading and what you need to uh, know about that version and what you need to take care of um, when reading that version to understand it being the authentic uh, communication from our God. All right? All right. So just, again, giving you opportunity to put questions or comments or anything in the chat tonight so that you might be able to, uh, we might be able to have a more productive study again. All right, so if you look down in the middle of page one now, I said, now that we have introduced the fact that the Bible is the Word of God, um, let me, let, let's ask the necessary, next necessary question. How do we get the Bi the Word of God? I'm sorry, how do we get the Word of God called the Bible? How do we get it? Um, we, the Bible didn't start off looking like a big book with 66 chapters. And I put that, that, I put that uh, icon down there, just the, the book with the ribbon in it. It says Holy Bible on the outside. And that incidentally is the, um, is the, uh, is the icon that you would look at, the picture. Uh, if you were to download the apps, I put on the side there the QR code to download this this Bible app, and I would I would encourage you to get this Bible app um, for our study purposes. 
put it on your phone. There's a QR code for iPhone. It's not going to cost you anything. You just need to download it and, and you'll have access to all the versions. We will do a lesson so that I can show you around, navigate um, this Bible on your, on your phone so that you'll be able to navigate um, and find some things there that will, will help you greatly in your understanding of the Bible. Um, so the QR code for the iPhone is there. The QR code for the Android is there. And you just need to position your cell phone over that QR code, your camera, and then you touch the little window that it creates and it'll take you to that page where you can download this particular Bible. Um, but it didn't start out looking like a big old book with 66 chapters. They didn't, Moses didn't have 66 chapters. Moses couldn't have had 66 chapters because the book of Acts, those 27 chapters that were written in the New Testament, weren't even around at the time of Moses. He would have had only the communications that were, were, were completed as of, as of the time of his living. Does that, does that kind of bring us some... Yeah, and I probably should have used somebody like Joseph, right? Um, uh, or let, let me even go on past that David. Let me, let me go way past that David uh, would have had something, King David, I mean, would have had something of the remnant of the stuff that Moses even wrote. The Old Testament writings and scriptures, which were the records of God's word in that particular economy back down there. All right. So consider, uh, look under the Bible. I put this consider Deuteronomy 32, 47. I took this from the New Living Translation or NLT, New Living Translation, um, Deuteronomy 32, 47. Look what it says. It says these instructions are not empty words. This is this is Moses talking to the people concerning the law. This is in Deuteronomy where, right? And he says these are these instructions or this law that he's giving the people of God are not empty words. They are your life. And so when you talk about the word of God being captured in something we call the scripture, which which then in in Moses's understanding is the law. The first time we see the words from God, he wrote them with his fingers on a tablet that he brought to, gave to Moses, who then brought to the people of God. It was God's word, right? And, and they were on tablets, you know, and so that was really the beginning of the writing of God's word, just like we have the writing today. But, but he wrote them on, the, on media, and, and they were, the, what media is there? We, we use paper right now, but the media then was a stone, stone tablets that God finger wrote his word. That was a, a kind of a precursor to uh, a, what, what we were going to get to as a Bible, right? And, uh, and, and so he brought those down to the people and, and he said that these are not empty words. They weren't just, God didn't just take time to write on these tablets. He said, they are your life. And so th there's something about the word of God. It is living. It is active. It is alive. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, right? It is, it is breathing because God breathed it to us, right? God, it, it was inspired. And so it has the power of God behind it. Um, and so he told them that these are your life, Israelites, this, don't take this lightly. These, and so I would tell you, don't, don't just casually look at your Bible. The Bible is your life. It's your life. And in fact, um, you want to become weak and you want to become sick and you want to become dis, uh, dysfunctional. You want to become um, incapable. Stop reading. Stop putting in you the life of the word and you will become weakened as a Christian. Um, the times when we are under greatest temptation and not able to cast down vain imaginations and, and to fight the good fight of faith when we are being war, we, we are being targeted in this war, um, in this spiritual war fair, we, we, you know, when we're weakest is when we have not fortified ourselves with the life of God's word, and, and, and then we find ourselves woefully unprepared 
to fight in the battle and weak and we find ourselves um, defeated, oftentimes um, broken and defeated. And I declare unto you that if we want to change this society, don't worry about um, what's going on in the election. Those are people, those, th those are folks that got, they have verbiage and words and, and, and sometimes it's lies and exaggerations and, and all kinds of mixtures of, of broken promises, but God's word is life. It's living. And so if you want to live, put living substance in you and watch your life uh, not, just, just, not just strive, but thrive and, and grow and, 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 um, and become, become even prosperous. But look what he says. These instructions are not empty words. They are your life. By obeying them, you will enjoy a long life in the land you will occupy when you cross the River Jordan, the Jordan River. He said to those people, he said that um, you're going to need in order to survive in your economy. When you get over there and God knew what was over there, he knew that there was going to be enemies over there. He knew that there was going to be challenges and frustrations. He said, when you get over there, you're going to need life to, to, to encounter the, the, the death grip that the society is going to impose upon you. We still need it today. He, what he gave to them, he has given to us. Turn to page two with me. Um, a word that's important to know in study is the word canon, and it's, it's the list of all the books that belong to the Bible. You might hear the word canon or uh, canonicity, which is the test of the validity of those books that belong to the Bi in the Bible set, that the 66 books were not the only books and not the only communications that were being made during that time, but it is a fascinating, fascinating, fascinating study on how God had strategically um, uh, supervised the Holy Ghost is amazing the, and navigated that we would get the exact unadulterated word that he wanted us to get. That, that's just um, called the Bible. But the canon is the list of all the books that belong in the Bible. Look what I wrote here, and I put a picture of what an ancient manuscript might have looked like. That's a lot of, that's a lot of work, and these weren't done on a typewriter. They didn't have typewriters. These weren't done on a printing press. They didn't have printing press. These were, words, words were written with ink uh, that, that was penned. And, you know, I, and when you see the, how straight these lines are and how they, un, unbelievable, they took meticulous care. It had to be supernatural power that, that empowered people to be able to do these kinds of things. Amen? So look at what I wrote here. Good stuff. It says, the words from God were first recorded on an ancient media of the day called manuscripts, and see below. The, the, the original documents of the Bible are no longer in existence. Maybe underline that, because I think it's important to know that people are going to challenge you and say, you know what, the, the words from, um, the, these, these words are no longer available. These words are no longer available, excuse me. Um, that these, these, these words that, that you... Um, that you read in the Bible, they are no longer in existence, that, that the original words from God um, weren't even available to the people who wrote those words. So how could you argue that this is the authentic word of God? You're going to get people who say that, right? But we, we need you to understand that the original documents of the Bible are no longer in existence um, because they were written on paper, the paper disintegrated. But what we do have, but copies of the originals have survived. From the time the word was scripted, they began to copy those words. They began to make copies of those. So people would write word for word all of these, all of this communication on other documents so that if you needed a copy, it had to be scribed. If you needed a copy, it had to be copied by hand. What kind of meticulous work? We don't even have that kind of work ethic today. I just think about that. In our time, we don't quite relate to the thousands and thousands of words being scripted on social, on media, like papyrus, parchment, leather, and such. We, we relate to, um, it says, we, we use the printing press, right? So we get one copy and then we push a button and a machine takes a photograph of it and shoots out as many copies as we want. But back in that day, they scripted, they wrote 
all these communications, the, the, the words that God gave the inspired men and women, um, they wrote them down or they had scribes that they, that when they, uh, when they spoke those words to the scribe, the scribe would write those down on these parchments and, and, and they were, uh, then become, they became individual copies, uh, the, the words of Genesis, the words of Exodus, the words, not, you know, um, you know, episode by episode, we call them chapters, you know what I mean? Um, and of, of the story, narrative by narrative, they wrote these things down. Unbelievable. But they, uh, it says, um, the, the words were being scripted on media like papyrus, parchment, leather, and such. We are used to printing presses. The ancient writers called scribes who were some of the most respected people in society took their jobs seriously. Study, um, study of the ancient manuscripts teach, teaches us today that there are some 25,000 copied manuscripts that are remarkably consistent. I, I want you to please underline that, circle it, um, highlight it, do something. But there are 25,000 copies, look at this, consistent from the first century until now, um, that, that the copies of the originals that when we when when they went to all the different Middle Eastern European and as it even made its way into the Americas, when um and, and when when those copies were brought back together, um before they you know to be compiled, they compared twenty five thousand individual copies that were made and they were consistent. That you know if we played that that um. The, the telephone game and spoke something in somebody's ear next to us, five people later, it would be different because we come from a different kind of culture. But, 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 but those were remarkably, that had to be the supervising hand of a Holy Spirit who could only alone be accountable to see a document that traveled hundreds and thousands of miles that, that was the same as another copy that was found thousands of miles in a different place for, from diff, among different people at a different time. That, that This was unbelievable. Um, it says they were distributed the, uh, throughout the then known world without the use of a press, otherwise they were copied by hand. These hand-produced copies of the Old Hebrew Old Testament and the Greek New Testament are called manuscripts. Those hand copies, they're called manuscripts. Um, because of that society the ancient Hebrews lived in, we can be certain, based on historical record, that the copied manuscripts were accurate copies of the original writings. All right, Because of the process, we can be sure of that. I want you to look at Romans 3, 1 and 2. Uh, if you don't have the uh, sheet before you, uh, go with me to Romans 3, 1 and 2. It says, uh, what advantage then has the Jew? Or, or what is the profit of circumcision? Much in every way. What advantage has the Jew, you know, when the question was asked, um, Paul asked the question in the culture, what, what advantage has the Jew, does the Jew have, um, the Hebrew person? And he said, much in every way, chiefly because um, to them were committed the oracles of God. To them, they had the sacred responsibility to guard over these precious sacred documents called manuscripts, which contained the word from their God. The word. If, if we were to preserve letters from someone who is so dear to us and, and don't want to ever lose the essence of what they communicated, that love letter that we, we just won't let go, ancient copies, we use pictures today to document things, but they were entrusted with the very oracles. That was the copies, these manuscripts, the words from the living God. They took their jobs seriously. I, I want to say this, that if we were to take any lesson from um, tonight's Bible study, let us take this lesson that, that the people who, who meticulously and painstakingly um, sought to keep watch over the word, boy, we could do well to we could do well to have just a and just a pinch of that kind of diligence toward our worship toward toward our um our love of the things of god to, to, we we could do just to have an ounce of the the kind of diligence that they carried over the word that we would be diligent to do the word of god and to read the word of god 
And when we read it, we don't read it technically, but read it like it was a love letter from your mighty God. One, a communication specifically to you to impart life into you. My Lord, my Lord. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank you for letting me teach you. I, I, um, I bless God. I bless God for that opportunity. But that's what advantage did you had. They were, they were entrusted with the oracles of God. Um, and I said, you know, think about this and discuss. And I, I'll come back to this here because um, time is kind of um, moving fast, and I, I want to make sure that we get through um, some some pertinent stuff. But but I want you to take a look at this. Um, maybe you can Google it. Maybe you can you got a book at home that may maybe give you some idea. But I would like to give even let you see a little documentary where you can take some notes on um, on this fascinating thing. Um, the many, many copies that have survived in the many, many different places these manuscripts have spread to are a testament to the accuracy of the scribes from the original documents. And I said, what is even more amazing is the story of the Dead Sea Scrolls found in the Qumran caves located on the northeastern shore of the Dead Sea. I put a, uh, a picture of the, 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 the Dead Sea, the caves that were right there at the foot of the Dead Sea on that northeastern shore where they found manuscripts from ancient customs and we found those in the um, we, we found those in the 1900s my god we, we found them I, I, I'll give you some more history let you look at but maybe you want to look at a presentation we found them in our time and when we found them, they were remarkably, remarkably, miraculously, meticulously consistent with things that were written 2,000 years ago and plus by hand. Another important word, page three, um, in, in the where did we get the Bible study um, is the word apocrypha. And I want to I want to just kind of show you this. I probably won't get to the scripture tonight, so um, I'll, I'll try to get to to a little bit of it. But look, go with me. Let's move through. Um, you know, kind of plow through page three. The apocrypha is a collection of say the word with me. Apocrypha, apocrypha, and and you may have heard this, but maybe you didn't. And I don't want this to be boring for you. I'm not trying to make a technical discussion, but you will hear these words when you get in um, debate, argumentation, question. Uh, with, with, with people who, uh, who are bold enough to say that I don't believe God, the Bible is God's authentic word. They're going to bring up this subject about the Apocrypha. Where are the lost books? And, and look at this. The Apocrypha is a collection of books written in the, in the four centuries between the Old and New Testament. Remember we talked about that period of silence between the Testaments. So the, the Apocrypha is a collection of books written in the four centuries, that 400 years, between the Old and the New Testaments. Um, it says, though the Apocrypha is not scripture, it's not scripture, uh, it's not in the Bibles. Now you will, find some, uh, you will find some Catholic Bibles that include uh, portions of the Apocrypha in there because in their council, and that was because, because you know, Rome had a... Um, Rome had a it was on a mission because you know if we get something we start to understand the nature of this whole Middle Eastern culture what what they were going through at the time Rome was really trying to preserve uh, the culture of the Christians these new Christians but they were trying to regulate them according to their government standard their Roman government standard and so uh, a lot of things happened during that the Crusades and and a lot of things happened in those in those times where uh, where, where Christianity was under persecution and, and yet under uh, development and was spreading because of of, of these persecuted Christians. Um, you know, you, you're going to find that a lot of things happened. And then there was, if you look here, it says many Protestants, like including Luther and Calvin and other reformers, um, have found the collection useful historically, theologically, and, and spiritually. They have found the Apocrypha to, be, Apocrypha to be useful, but it's not God's authentic word. It's not God-breathed. It wasn't inspired. It wasn't uh, it didn't come from those who God ordained and chose for the task of, of spreading his word, but they came, contained some theology that was 
that was um, useful, some uh, script, uh, spiritual uh, applications that were useful, and some historical information that was consistent, but but largely, by and large, the, the, the information was not consistent with the books that were considered a part of the canon. Hope I didn't uh, confuse you there. But, but I want to show you something. This will take away all the confusion. Um, discerning readers of the Apocrypha gain a fuller understanding of the first century Juda Judaism. What was going on at the time? What was the culture like? Um, these are the books that are listed below. Look at, look at those books. First and second Ezra. Those aren't in our Bible. Um, you can find some of these in, in Catholic Bibles, but, but we don't use these because they were not, they got included at a council, not by the inspired writers of the, of the, of the uh, Bible. But 1st, 2nd Ezra, Tobit, Judith, um, the rest of Esther, another part to Esther, the, the Wisdom of Solomon, Ecclesiasticus, known as Sirach, um, Baruch, um, Jer um, it's an epistle uh, of Jeremiah, the songs of the three holy children, the history of Susanna, Bell and the dragon, the prayer of Manasseh, first and second Mac Maccabees, which are some of the more popular books that they get some of the history from, even the book of Enoch and Jasher and Jubilees, as well as the gospel of Thomas. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go over this with you. I, you know, I, I can feel the chat getting hot right now because there are people, yes, pastor, what happened to the book of Enoch? Because there's a lot of people saying, you, y'all trying to hide something from uh, from from us as a culture that there, there's some things in the book of Enoch that, that you took out of the Bible not so they were never a part of the inspired canon or the list of all the books that belong in the Bible let, let me show you why here's some interesting facts in the middle of page three um, th there was an ancient historian his name was Josephus back in the ancient um, Near East times he, uh, Josephus says these writings were not considered to be worthy of equal credit with what we know, now know as the Old Testament scriptures. He said, he said in his writings, he was a historian, but he said that he acknowledged that these apocryphal writings were not on par with the writings that the, the sacred writings that the Jews had had guard over. Right? Um, number two, one of the early church fathers, Origen is his name. Y'all say this with me, Origen. Well, he was an early church father back in the um, second, third, fourth centuries, right? These early church fathers, Origen was quoted to have said this, no book of the Apocrypha is affirmed as canonical, meaning part of the canon, was, was not affirmed as canonical, and the books of Maccabees are explicitly said to be outside of these canonical books. He himself, they have, a, they have him, his writing that preserves that statement, so when we go back and take a look at why, why aren't those books Included because you even had historians, you had early church fathers that if we could go back and interview them, they would tell us, no, no, sir, no, ma'am. They weren't part of the books that the, that the Jews guarded as the canon of Scripture, the books that belong, the 66 books that belong in the Bible as inspired writing of God. Look at this. Jesus and other, number three, Jesus and other New Testament writers quote various parts of the Old Testament scriptures as divinely authoritative over 295 times. Jesus made reference and other New Testament writers made reference back to the Old Testament in the New Testament. In the New Testament, they made reference to the, some Old Testament writings. Never once did they make a reference to something that was from any of those books that were listed above. And so they would say that Jesus himself really validates whether or not those were considered to be the sacred writings that express the word of God, right? Let me, um, let me look. Number four is going to really kind of rock you because look at this. Look at the closing passage. Now, we like, you know, theologians, we love to use this one because the fact of the matter is that most people who would come to say, where's the, where's the book of Enoch? Where's the gospel of Thomas? Uh-huh. You 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 y'all took them out because you know that there's some truth in there. You're really trying to hide some truth. Well, well, here's here's one of the here's one of the reasons why um they didn't make the they, they didn't make the cut. They didn't make the set of, of scriptures that belong to the books that became inspired writings of the Bible. Look at look at a closing passage. Number four, look at the closing passage of we call a non-canonical, it's a disputed book, 
um, but, but, you know, from, from the secular culture. But um, it says, look at a passage, the closing passage, meaning that the end of the end of that book of the Gospel of Thomas, not the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but the Gospel of Thomas. And, and incidentally, Thomas never even wrote it. That, that they, they didn't have evidence that Thomas wrote it. How, did, how would they know that Thomas wrote? Because they had writings. They, they knew what Thomas's uh, style of communication was, and the writing in that book didn't sound like Thomas. Right? I mean, the, things like that. It's, it's a big study. That's why I don't want to take you way in there. But look at the last part of, this, of the closing passage in the book of Thomas, the Gospel of Thomas. It says, Simon Peter said to them, Let Mary go away from us. For women are not worthy of life. Let me, let me read that again. This is, the, this is the last line in the book of, of the closing um, part of the Gospel of Thomas. Simon Peter said to them, let Mary go away from us, for women are not worthy of life. He goes on to say in that passage, Jesus said, Lo, uh, I shall lead her so that I may make her a male. I shall lead her so that I may make her a male that she too may become a living spirit resembling you males. For every woman who makes herself a male will enter into the kingdom of heaven. That, that inspired writers who, who wanted to convince, I, I mean, non-inspired writers who wanted to convince the inspired writers and the keepers of the, the, wall, the word, the divine word of God, when they wrote this stuff, it didn't even, it didn't jive with the rest of the writings. This is bad theology. It was, you, you, you know, here's the, here's the, the point. Most people who dispute, where's the book of Thomas? Where's the book of Jasher? Where's the book of Enoch? Never even read them. Because if you started reading them, you might find something that you, oh yeah, I like that. But you can't cherry pick. You can't, you can't decide which, you know, kind of apple pick. Let me put it that way. You can't decide which, which, which passages you want to keep and which, you know. So if, the, if, if, there's, if there's that line of error, then, then the whole writing was, was put aside. It wasn't a part of, it may have some information that might be useful, but it was not from God. This is confusion. For every man, woman who makes herself a male will enter into the kingdom of heaven. My Lord. Um, here's the last part. I'll, I'll, I'll stop tonight here. Then we'll go on with the scripture next week. Ask you to read. That's just Romans chapter uh, 10, verses 1 through 21. We'll go through that on next week. But look at this. We got the Bible as a collection of authorized writings. That's how do we get the Bible. We got a, a, the Bible as a collection. They, they collected this writing and this writing and that writing and that writing and they put them together in their logical communications um, in, in, you know, and I tell you meticulously because the Bible reads like one big long story. But, but it's a collection of these authorized or inspired writings um, the Word of God. And, and look at this. Look at how it's validated, because I think this will bless you. Look at this, and we'll finish after this. Um, it's validated by the Scriptures themselves claim authority as the words of God. Look at Jeremiah 30 and 2. It, it, it says itself that this is the Word of God. That was the prophet Jeremiah. Um, so the Scriptures themselves authenticate the Scriptures and, or, or, or validate the, that they are inspired. Look, next one is the ancient Jewish guardians... The, the ones I call from Romans 3, um, the, those ancient Jews um, from whom these words originated regarded them as God's word. We have to go back and, and study those people. This is what people do for a living. They go back and study um, all the words that really authenticate the, the scripture. And if you go back to those ancient guardians, those guardians, um, they put aside anything that, did, that was not inspired. They didn't include in the canon something that was not um that that didn't uh go along with the theological when it didn't sound like god they questioned it right um number three the early church fathers affirmed it in their teachings and writings just like i gave you about origin he you know when they taught and wrote they never mentioned any of these other books that i gave you called the apocrypha there are many 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 other writings but i just chose this set called the apocrypha um jesus quotes from the new testament 
never even uh, mentioning anything from any of these books. Uh, the apostles and the New Testament authors made affirmation of it in the scriptures. Um, even the other writers, not just Jesus referring back to the Old Testament, but the other New Testament writers referred to other New Test Old Testament sources, and none of these were included. Um, the ancient historians, like I told you about Josephus, he wasn't the only one. Like, you know, he was a news reporter, right? Um, the ancient historians, some non-Christian, acknowledge it in their published materials. So you didn't have to go to the church because, of course, people would say, well, you know, of course they're going to validate it because it's their documents. It's the church. But you had outside people who were quoting things and, and writing things that were authenticating whether or not this was really actually the word of God, considered the word of God. Other affirmations, such as the consistency with other teachings in the Bible, they compare, they compare theology, they compare, they weigh what's being said, that women have got to become male spirit so that they can enter into heaven. There, there's nowhere else you can find authentication of, of that kind of principle in the scripture. Nowhere. It is erroneous. It's, it's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's faulty theology, false teaching. And finally, the councils, you're going to hear a lot about this, the councils and the synods, synods um, th those are the ecclesiastical courts or the assemblies of clergy that formally recognize the authorized writings, um, the studies of people who meticulously go back and say, yes, this was God's inspired word. It comes from many, many sources. But, but, but the most critical is that the Holy Ghost filled his word with life. He filled his word with life. And we are the vessels that, that ought to soak in that life so that our life authenticates the word of the living God. That's how we got the Bible. The collection of writings that were, of authorized writings that were assembled into the book we now know um, as the Bible. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, we, we bless you, and we honor you for this uh, opportunity for us to study your word, Lord God. We know that this was um, kind of, you know, um, some, some sometimes high-level um, things, Lord God, and, and but it's important that we know these basic principles so that we understand what scrutiny the word of God was always under, and specifically in our day and age, Lord God. I believe we're going back through those times of persecution, and I believe that... Um, that the people of God have got to be able to understand some things um, so that we don't look unequipped and, we, and we're not afraid to let other people with every wind of doctrine convince us that their way is right, that we need to understand some principles so that we can properly defend that your word is divinely inspired, the Holy Spirit kept it, and that same Holy Ghost lives in us that will reject that which is not you, Lord God, but accept everything that is. And so we bless you for all these as we study together tonight. I pray that we have grown. I pray that our faith is strengthened and that we are ready for the assignment, Lord God, of, of, um, of breathing in, inhaling your word, Lord God, so that we might be, um, we might be instruments of your life. And we bless you for it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for taking your time tonight. And I say to you, worship our King.